Hi everyone, today we have an unboxing of a previously unused the Forgotten Blackberry Storm 2 from the year 2009 in original package. This is the successor to the smartphone that was called the worst in history. Let's find out if it was that bad and how it was different from the original Blackberry Storm. I bought it from really old stock, but the package here is definitely not the worst in history. In this video I will occasionally refer to a popular review from the time, here's what they wrote about the package itself. Considering the high price tag, we find the Blackberry Storm 2 retail package fairly modest. Reviewers of those years were not ready for the modern iPhones package. Here we have a charger, a micro USB data cable and there are three plugs for the charger for US, Europe and UK sockets respectively. Also included is a leather carrying case, headphones, a CD with a necessary software and even a made in Turkey polishing cloth. Of course we are talking about a premium smartphone which initial pricing was 179 US dollars after mail in rebate with a 2 year contract. However, many years later such a bundle looks like a luxury even a smartphones for thousands of dollars. Screen keyboard, phone, screen, keyboard, phone, screen, keyboard, phone. So a bit of history. In a 2015 book losing the signal, the untold story behind the extraordinary rise and spectacular fall of BlackBerry, the authors argued that the storm was the single biggest disaster in smartphone history. I do claim that the reviewers, while for the most part right about the first generation, unfairly judged the very concept of the device and especially its keyboard. Today we review BlackBerry's work on mistakes in 2009. The BlackBerry Storm 2 is the first and only smartphone in the world to have a full clickable touchscreen, was called Sure Press by BlackBerry, powered by its piezoelectric sensors underneath the screen. According to Wikipedia, a piezoelectric sensor is a device that uses a piezoelectric effect to measure changes in pressure, acceleration, temperature, strain or force by converting them to an electrical charge. So, in Storm 1 there was one physical button that lied in the direct center of the screen. So the screen on the Storm was slow and had to fully lower and raise before you could press another key. The second generation you could type faster as piezo technology allows multi-touch input. Some users complained about their hands getting tight after writing a few emails on their original Storms, so on Storm 2 this effect is mitigated. Yes, it's unusual, but it's for sure comfortable to type short texts as well as single-handedly. Also, with Storm 2 the screen stays put when the device is locked or off and overall this mechanism is much better. Again, the display supports press as well as touch input and you can utilize both. It also offers finger gestures, for example for sliding pictures in gallery. In regular touchscreen terms, the extra step is more of a disadvantage. This is a so wrong perception of the UI. It's actually useful to see what you're about to click, especially if the UI isn't familiar to you yet. Besides, you don't need to tap something to select something, pressing alone is enough. Four buttons below are part of the piezoelectronic screen, so they can be pressed uh, when the device is turned off. Actually, I wish they would have left them as physical keys, not only because it's the whole point of this phone, but also because of this. It seems like buttons are too sensitive, although maybe it's only with my device. Ah, 
Unlike the original Storm, it also supports Wi-Fi and multi-touch. Even though you can select text with two fingers, unfortunately you can't zoom in on a photo this way. In that case, what did they consider multi-touch, right? Well, for example, you can hold Swift on the keyboard and press other keys to type uppercase. We also have mini jack here and LED indicator that notifies of missed calls and messages, low battery and charging. There are two so-called convenience keys on the left and right sides. The default function of the right convenience key is opening camera and for the left it is voice commands. Voice control is still working by the way. Say a command. Call Mr. BB user. Mr. BB user, which location? Work one. However, both keys can be bound to many other functions. What's more, convenience key on the right is a two-step button, which allows to easily operate camera autofocus. A very strong side of this smartphone is BlackBerry S5. It is amazing how functional this system is. You can open context menus everywhere in which you'll find countless options. Just remember, in 2009 with the release of iOS 3, iPhone 3GS just finally got copy and paste functionality. We're not even talking yet about the built-in office suite and organizer functions, but the system itself feels like a complete product, not a half-assed uh, wannabe made in haste. You can pin folders on home screen, you can hide apps in AppGrid, you can even lock key layouts on keyboard. It has a elaborate permission system. It has built-in password manager app. It's hard to believe, but this is the OS of, as they say, the worst ever smartphone in history. The downside of the system is UI, which was called plain ugly by contemporaries. In some places that is true. Perhaps this was done to speed up the system or maybe BlackBerry just didn't have time for pretty new menus and icons. Yes, this is not iPhone's what you see is what you get approach, as you have a BlackBerry button here, which reveals menus with context sensitive options and sometimes it's not very intuitive. At least you have a quick shortcut uh, when you press BlackBerry button twice, as it chooses the main option automatically, for example while saving settings. And yes, back in the day you always needed to save everything. A press and hold of the menu key bring up the task manager and you can fully close most of the apps, albeit some apps will stay in the list anyway. At the same time multitasking is here and it's working. Again, remember that it wasn't available on iPhone till iOS 4. Sure, you can play music in the background even though there's no indication of it. Now, let's talk about keyboards. There are three of them, multi-tap, short type and full QWERTY for both landscape and portrait orientation. Multi-tap was maybe added for old men as it comes directly from dumb phones, but I always hated such keyboards, so it's a pass for me. The BlackBerry Storm 2 came out in 2009, but unfortunately these phones were rare in Ukraine. So at that time, namely in 2010, I had Samsung Monte, a handset with a touch input, but in reality budget and 
sound very uh, featureless feature phone. In that Samsung screen keyboard was only in that awful feature phone style mode, even though it had touch screen already. Disgusting. Fortunately, we do have second option here, which is sure type, and it's a godsend. You can just type, but it always predicts correctly what you're going to type. Today they would call it a keyboard with AI, but it's truly superb indeed. Furthermore, it works not only in English, they really caught me off guard. American companies are notorious for supporting few languages and regions, but okay, these are Canadians. Yes, uh, there can sometimes be hitches when you have to choose a particular letter or when you try to type proper names, which, by the way, I immediately added into the custom dictionary. Therefore, you can also quickly turn the device around to type a proper noun, for instance. Or you can switch the keyboard type to, for example, enter a web address in a browser. At the same time with short type and its large keys it's hard to miss a letter, which makes the keyboard ideal for quickly typing short messages with one hand, especially on a screen this small. So if you're a big boss you can reply to your subordinates without fully taking your phone out of your pocket. Very important here is that unlike on original Storm, short type keyboard layout in portrait mode can be disabled, so you can use full QWERTY keyboard everywhere. But honestly, while pressing such a small screen, I often miss keys even in landscape. And of course, you can pick from the keyboard and dictionary suggestions uh, with just pressing the needed option. Now let's look at browsing in 2009. It's not that bad considering that on my old Samsung Monte I could never open a single web page. It's great that you never hit a link by mistake when scrolling, a scroll and tap are two very different actions. Cursor support is also useful considering that websites back in the day didn't have mobile versions as there were plenty of tiny elements. People at the time said that browser was faster than on iPhone even though it didn't support Adobe Flash Player, and that claim might seem ridiculous until you remember that even YouTube used Flash Player up until 2015, so Blackberry users had to use third-party browsers sometimes. Of course, I didn't expect the browser to work after all these years, but the downside is that from time to time my Storm gets stuck and reboots when the browser overloads device's resources. The Storm series were considered not very stable, so a third-party app can freeze, etc. What's next? The alarm application will only allow you to set one alarm which doesn't get standing ovation. It's ridiculous, because multiple alarms become available on iPhones only in 2023. What I think is that alarm app here is great, as it allows to choose from various styles, modes and can be even automatically launched on charging. In general, uh, talking of applications, side loading is in fact not limited by anything. With BlackBerry World being shut down, apps can be downloaded via BlackBerry desktop software or from an SD card. What's funny is that my 32GB SD card works, even though only 16GB were available at that time. A lot of apps you can find online are designed for standard BlackBerry smartphones without touchscreens, so that's a problem. However, I was able to find PDF to go with license key, Opera Mini, a couple of applications and games.
My Blackberry Storm came with Spring Breaker and Fort Mole, and I also added a few games. Let's see what we could play in 2009. An excellent archive with BlackBerry desktop software, apps, games and teams I'll leave link to in the description. You heard it right, it has custom team support. I'm feeling the spirit of the 2000s. Yes, you guessed it, the camera takes much better quality photos than I expected. On my old Samsung camera was disgusting, as I could not distinguish text on the photos I took. This was a crucial point for me, as you still couldn't take pictures of cheat sheets at school. With BlackBerry Storm 2 I would have been completely satisfied, because the photos here are quite high resolution, there's also autofocus, focus adjustment with a button and camera flash. Daylight photos taken on the BlackBerry Storm 2 are adequate for 2009, these are very much of the time. Now let's compare the photos I took on this BlackBerry with the photos taken with Samsung Mountain. Worth saying, very good screen for those years. 3.25 inches capacitive touchscreen of 360 to 480 pixel resolution supporting 65,000 colors. You can even watch video on it, though not more than in 360p apparently. I tried different formats and only AVI worked, who knows how media worked in 2009. Overall, the contrast and brightness are top-notch for the screen of the Terra. Remembering myself in 2009, I would have been in 7th heaven if I got a device like this. In addition, like on other BlackBerry models, there are some smart features which are available when using the brand case, such as auto-end calls when the phone is put into holster. We pay you a lot of money. This is really not hard. It's a keyboard on a screen on a keyboard. And I don't care what you think of it. Of the disadvantages, we must say about the material used on the ends of the body. It's a rubberized coating that is prone to melting over time and feels sticky. 
Next, no email support without BlackBerry Internet Services or Peace account, which could have been activated only by a cellular provider. Unfortunately, this approach had proven to be unviable and short-lived. As a former mobile network company employee, I can confidently say that you should never rely on cellular providers, even if such approach was necessary to provide secure email and other great features, still it limited market for BlackBerry VS countries and providers that supported BIS. Although typing short text is much less tiring than on the BlackBerry Storm 1, typing long texts is still hard. If a BlackBerry Storm 3 were to ever see the light of day, the piezoelectric screen feedback would need to be made softer, or in a way it could be customized, so that fingers were not getting so tired with prolonged typing. Going back to the UI, uh, yes, indeed, the interface of BlackBerry OS 5 can be considered excessively aesthetic and uh, outdated even at that time. At about the same time, for example, this is a UI that offered aspiring new Palm smartphones. Obviously, BlackBerry struggled to adapt old-fashioned UI to the touchscreen. In fact, only BlackBerry OS 10 finally managed to solve this. Also, to install or uninstall an app, you often should do a full reboot, and it will be far longer than a usual boot time. What else? I was never able to use the mute button to switch notification profiles. I don't know how it should work actually. On the home screen I can select profiles manually from the list, but I can't quickly switch them using the button. The button itself does work as it can be used to stop or continue media playback. Last but not least, uh, multi-touch doesn't work for images. Pressing buttons in the context menu or pressing the screen repeatedly is exhaustingly long, as it comes straight from classic smartphones with no touch screen. This will be fixed by BlackBerry much later, but it's another story. Good temporary solution would have been to use a volume rocker as a zoom lever, but they didn't figure it out. A couple of other things I'd like to highlight. The first one is sure type. This version of the keyboard is close to perfect, no matter what anyone said. Suggestions are incredibly accurate and not just in English, which is mind blowing. I think the claims against it were unfair and beast. People were intimidated by the very look of this keyboard. Actually, you have to realize that it has an error application. It is fast typing for messaging. In a browser, for example, you need to switch to another keyboard. Sure type was great for that particular user cases for that small screen at that time. Next thing, very fast booting and connecting to network, especially compared to newer smartphones. It's a soft boot actually, more like an exit in the sleep mode. Such system gives Storm an ability to turn on and off on a schedule. Just like in other BlackBerry handsets of that time, to restart it fully you need to take out the battery. Screen rotation works fast too, although it famously can be switched off. As on other BlackBerry smartphones, you can switch to next or previous song via the long press of the volume up or volume down button, respectively. It's a shame this hasn't become an industry standard. The first storm was a proof of concept, and although implementation was bad, the concept itself deserved attention. I won't judge how in demand a smartphone with a screen that you can physically press could become, but it could definitely be a separate class of product and add value for many people. So, for example, nowadays premium notebooks use checkpads, which simulate touch and give haptic feedback, and these checkpads are the best in the industry. For that matter, the select, check, press sequence can be applied not only for typing and be useful not only for elderly. Too often we click things on our touch devices that we didn't want to click. Piezoelectric technology could also be an alternative to the now discontinued force touch or 3D touch, i.e. a great way to add context menus and additional functions to the cramped touch UI of applications on smartphones, tablets and smartwatches. I personally like this concept even though sometimes pressing the storm display is more pleasant and sometimes less, again I would really like to be able to adjust the display feedback, though this may be a subjective feeling. But I can say for sure, you really get used to this thing, and you feel switching to a smartphone with regular screen. And this is why the concept had the right to life. Thank you for watching this video, be sure to subscribe and let me know in the comments what do you think about this legendary BlackBerry series.